A very distinguished panelist and uh, the August Forum here, friends, dear colleagues. First of all, I must thank the Amity Institute for giving me this opportunity of sharing my thoughts and experience with you. I am indeed very humbled by the introduction, you know, which taught the awards but uh, could not really bring out, you know, the people, the hard work, the collaboration, the partnerships of so many millions faces, you know, especially those from the community with which we have been engaged to work in this entire exercise of bringing the paradigm shift in what governance means, what leadership means. It is basically their work, you know, which a voice comes across to me, which I have been personally engaged with for more than a decade of my life, you know, bringing those voices here in these forums too. For me, the leadership challenge, you know, as I would see in context of the changing times, and as you would agree, is looking and addressing the paradox today which we find between of, of poverty amidst plenty, of the huge gap between the haves and the have nots of addressing you know, this huge issue of how to maintain those which are the people who are marginalized, the people who stay at the fringes of the society. You just have this thing just you know, as I'm talking, with the hopes of these people that you can see, we recently carried a huge survey of the homeless people in Delhi. The first time ever this is to be taken by any state. Now these people, they have made these you know things for themselves, trying to give them identity and voice. So for me, leadership is all about giving a voice to the unheard and each as leaders, as potential noble leaders. You know what I am calling a huge potential for all of you is to invite that spirit of 360 degree vision, where the integrative leadership not only boundary. It is not transactional, but is transformational leadership, which does not differentiate between sectors of economy, and livelihood, and health, and education, but it sees, you know, a total 360 degree integrated vision of development as a whole, which does not have boundaries. With this, I just want to, you know, render the short note which I have in terms of the shift of governance and leadership that we are working towards. Some lights. I can just read out here. Can I just have some lights yeah, sure. for this? Yeah. Uh, the type of leadership and governance which I'm talking about has to reach out to the community's doorstep to be able to be inclusive, to be able to be effective. It is important that the public-private community partnership model. I can't see, but it's okay. I'll just like yeah, you know. But if you have some some lights, then I'll have it like more focused. For the government, this can be only possible, yeah, this is fine, if it partners with the communist organization. You know, when I was given this topic, I was very happy to see that we're talking of partnership between, you know, the community-based organization, between the business, between education. So it is this partnership which the government has realized lies the key to success in terms of reaching out to the people. The civil society, hence, has an important role to play in the development of nation. It is the bridge which connects the government to its people, the interface which facilitates a meaningful exchange between the community and the government. Realizing this, we innovated with the unique model of PPCP, the mission convergence, which has just been talked about. Now, this mission harnesses the potential of the civil society to emerge as a powerful and dynamic program in that holistic and inclusive social development. The program was conceived as a to reach out unreached sections of the society. Now this reaching out was not that simple and could have been just like a white paper concept unless we brought about a change in the way of delivery, a collaborative style of working and partnership model which can be developed in full engagement with the community themselves. It went beyond our perceived notion of justice and equality because we believed in first empowering people with knowledge about their rights, knowledge about the entitlements. We had to understand the complexity of the lives of the community in which we are living. The complexity made us understand also that what we need to do is to understand what poverty really means. You know, does it mean only income deprivation or does it mean the vulnerability of the people, you know, which takes you to much more than just one dollar a day? Delhi itself has been facing, you know, huge governance and complex challenges. Most of the people living here, you know, would have seen the huge gaps that you find, you know, between the haves and the have-nots. The adverse sex ratio, the huge migration issue 
of people coming all over in search of better dreams and better livelihood. The overstretched infrastructure, the lack of cohesiveness in the various initiatives. How do we rise up to the challenge to respond to more than 4 million people living here in extreme vulnerable conditions, in the squatter settlements, in the Yugi clusters, without the capacity to engage with the formal systems, without having a voice, without benefiting from the opportunity which people like you and me have got to improve our capacity. It called for an encompassing vision and a mission mode strategy. We studied many internal and international best practices, models, you know, where it was important think of delivery, which was not business as usual, but something different, you know, something in which we had to think out of the box as a solution. This led us to forging of network ties with the civil society organization and adopt a model of highly collaborative partnership governance, collaborative leadership, the focus on developing leadership potential, not just at a particular level, but leadership potential reaching out to the grassroots, with a particular focus on women, because we believe in gender equality and mainstreaming gender as our strategy approach. A large number of issues had to be addressed you know, for this partnership and uh, making you know, a truly effective and a robust instrument of social change. One of the major issues was that the bureaucracy and the political authority, which was not used to that kind of collaborative or model, where it's been given a voice, you know, it was an issue where it was a matter of sharing authority with civil society organizations. Now, partnerships have been there, but have they been truly meaningful? That was the question coming back to us again and again. Is it equal? Do we have an equal right to engage in policy issues and question fundamental issues of governance? Convincing many people to come to consensus and changing the mindsets and the perceived notions from looking at those at the bottom of the pyramid as unproductive citizens, as you would see um, the, how Amartya Sen describes people, you know, a fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, you know, how do we look at that section? So it was like really important for us, you know, to come up with that element of trust and changing notion as, uh, you know, the, what is the bridge, the line which divides the haves and the have-nots. In this mission which was talked about, there were nine different departments which were brought to the fold. The departments which had been engaged in looking at welfare programs, like the Department of Social Welfare, or Women and Child, or Labor, or Education, or the Department of SCST and Minority, or the Information Technology itself, and the Health. Now they all had their different silos, you know, bureaucratic style of working. There were more than 100 committee-based organizations which were brought together into the fold, you know, who were earlier living in their own sweet jackets and not really being able to either partner with the government or with each other. There were more than 10,000 grassroots level people who were engaged. There were more than uh, 100 different ex experts, institutions which were brought into the fold to look at the paradigm shift of how do we define poverty and what is our strategy to change you know, the, the, our, our current style of governance and to make governance more inclusive. The conventional approach of government leading from the top had to be challenged and to realize and to make our own government system conscious that it was important for the government to be looking at grassroots level approach and to be bottom up. The program had women as center stage of the social change that we were looking at. In this, in this kind of a style of functioning, what we could achieve was something like a miracle for many of us in the last two years. We could create an identity for more than five million people living with multiple vulnerabilities. You can just like, while these photographs are going on, you can see the way the, the poor women have engaged with the system. So giving an identity for people who otherwise were not a part of our formal system at all. You know, bringing them into the framework of our welfare programs. We could provide intervention service centers on a scale in which we could cover all such areas where there was a concentration of vulnerable segments living. We could create a database of the homeless who were not counted, including the destitute women living on the streets, and start interventions for giving them decent shelter, health care, and mental counseling. We could organize advocacy of local issues which were troubling. You know, the women, the girls, the community on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, the lack of clean drinking water, lack of toilets, the denial of education. It was heart-rendering for me just a week back. 
you know when we started a new project of menstrual hygiene you know giving sanitary napkins to the girls at 50% of what they would get in the market and for the most vulnerable free of cost and the girls walked up to us and said that well can you convince our parents to send us to school and i realized that what are we doing to them you know just depriving of any opportunity of doing to their full capacity depriving of the basic things which we me and you would take for granted so the girls were like you know their eyes were like yeah you know i i can never forget it that you know they are aware of the fact you know what change it can bring into their lives and yet they are deprived so how to give them a voice also through this mechanism we could establish the intersectionality and the multidisciplinary nature of leadership which requires you know to to transcend the boundaries of as i said that looking at you know health and livelihood and social protection and social assistance and social development in compartments through this partnership we did have valuable insights you know which could which could draw the first was the need to acknowledge it is necessary in the strengths of government private sector order to make it truly meaningful and to bring about a lasting lasting positive change the government has its own strength whereas the private sector civil society has its strength and it's important for us to mind that strength otherwise the social change they're not is it possible to bring about we realized that there was a need to bring the different non governmental actors together by breaking their barriers and the turfs you know there's so many civil society organizations that they've been engaged with so that they've been like you know all trying to protect their turfs that it's my sector homeless it's like you know so and so organization i have been working on this subject you know so how do we break that turf that there are many others and you know there's lot of space for everybody to work collaboratively breaking barriers between the elected representatives government functionaries and the local community leaders now with the elected representative themselves there was a like we had like you know very tough line trying to bring about the advocacy that you know you need to partner because they said then why you want to make things so simple for the poor you know because old age pension and widow pension and you know the social assistance are preserved are monopoly and uh, uh, to to make things you know uh, if you make it so simple people are not going to come to us so it's not enough like you know again convincing them that look it's the right to you know when you say that the transparency and accountability it is towards the people then and in an age where we are saying that everything has to be in the public domain we can't have our elected leader say that you know things are going to just revolve around them with this uh, i think uh, i would you know like to end by just a few words uh, and a quote from mahatma gandhi that we gave to ourselves when we were to start the mission or any other program i would say that i was have been involved in forms which have been which have looked simple but if it is involved like battling with a lot of vested interests reforms like integrated child development services sitting which has potential to change you know the problem of malnutrition the huge infant mortality rate or maternal mortality rate the in the gap now the reforms you know simple but then you start taking the vested interest you realize that you know at the one to find it may seem that you can't change but then we remember that by being a change in yourself as mahatma gandhi said you know you can change the world and as margaret mead said you know that you can change the world you know by bring a change and be the change you know as gandhi said be the change that you want to see in life and that is the change that every day has to be lived in that transformation has to be lived every day and i have lived that transformation along with you know millions of others whom i could convince that it is possible to bring about a positive change provided we you know transcend our mental barrier of looking at things and decide to join hands so this you know all my hopes and wishes for the global leaders the integrative leaders and the transformational leaders in each of you that we can hope emerge definitely thank you so much